Hi everyone, this is Tuplex. Welcome back. Um, I've been redesigning the train station that I did in the last episode. Um, you may recall that I had set it up to where we had an unloading station for each of the three ingredients, steel, plastic, and copper. And then I had a another train station that was going to take the finished low density structures out. Um, after I put that together, I was given it some more thought and I came up with a design that I like a little bit better. And um, the reason I like this is that this design will work with only one unloading station for all the ingredients and then one station to pick up the product and take it out. So it'll allow us to be uh, quite a bit more compact, have the buildings and the storage chest closer together. That'll reduce the robot paths. Um, to get the material to and from the machines, uh, which should result in a more efficient operation. So um, the way that I did this is, uh, you know, we have the out, outgoing station, which will take the finished product out of here. And then I have one station here called LDS Unload. So all the material, no matter what kind of material it is, will come into the station. It'll unload into these chests. Um, now, you might look at this and say, that's not a lot of chests and it can't hold that much material, but if you think about it, a train cargo wagon has 40 slots in it. Each one of these chests has 48 slots, and we have six of them for each cargo wagon. Uh, so that means that we can take more than seven trains full of material into these chests, and that's if we don't use anything before they get full. Um, so one row of chests like this can can hold a lot of material, and that ought to be enough to keep this operation running at full speed, um, you know, for at least a couple minutes before more trains need to come in. Um, so I've got those two stations, and then what I did down here is I made some incoming train stations. Uh, I have six of them. So all the trains, no matter what kind of material they're bringing in, they'll first come in to one of these incoming stations. They'll wait there until they get a signal. And they'll receive a signal when there is less than a full train's worth of inventory already here in the chests. So let's say uh, a train holds 8,000 steel plates, for example. Um, it'll get here. The station will read the contents of the train. It'll see 8,000. And then if there's less than 8,000 plates already in here, it'll send the train through to the unloading station. If we already have 8,000 or more, then that steel train will just wait here until the inventory falls low enough and then the train will go through. So that way we'll always have somewhere between zero and one trains worth of material here. Um, and the idea is not to let it drop to zero because we don't want it to stop. So anytime the inventory dips below one full train's worth, it'll send a train through. So, um, and we don't want to just send trains through whenever they arrive, because if the chests, if any of the chests fill up, then the next train that comes in might not be able to unload. It'll prevent other trains from coming in and it'll just jam up the whole system. So we have to control the delivery of material when we're going to have one common unloading station for everything. So, um, the way that I've implemented that control is um, I hooked up a signal wire to a RoboPort and told it to read the contents of the logistics network. So anything that's in these provider chests will be read. Um, so for demonstration, I just put some iron plates in one of the chests. So we can see here that the input signal is 143 iron plates. And then I tell it just to take each input and multiply it by negative one and send it out. So the output gives me a negative number. Okay, so minus 143 iron plates in this case. And then I send that down to the input stations. And what happens when a train stops here, the station will read the contents of the train It'll send it to this decider combinator, and it'll say if there's anything greater than zero to send out a green signal. Um, and then remember that we're, we're adding signals. Um, so because we have this minus 143 
on the red wire going over here. And then whatever positive number, which is the contents of that train comes out, it'll get added to the negative number. So basically we have to have more material in the train than we have already in our inventory in order to get a positive number to come out of this comparison. Uh, and so that's, that's how this works. So if we get a positive number, that means that we have less than a full train's worth of material and in inventory and we want to send the train through. All right, so I just have it send a green signal. And then I have to multiply that green signal by negative one because if I send a positive green signal back to the station to be passed to the train, then this will become true and it'll always stay true and then the trains will always go through. So that was the only way I could get this to work is if I made the go signal a negative uh, instead of positive, since this is always just looking for positive numbers as a condition to send the train through. And I like doing it this way with any things and on these, um, because then I don't have to set these to read a particular material type, right? So I don't have to tell it if plastic is less than this or if steel is greater than that. I can just tell it to look for any positive number. So anything that comes here, if there's more in the train than there is over here, it's gonna send it through to be unloaded. Um, and where this is gonna be really nice is when I'm setting up more stations for other products. For example, the rocket control units. I can copy this whole thing with a blueprint. I can lay it down and then pretty much all I have to do is change the recipes here on the machines, you know, change the requester chests um, here and there and then I'm done and it's ready to go. I can send, I can send anything in here on a train and it'll, and it'll process it. The other nice thing about this is because I'm not telling it in advance what quantity makes a full train. Um, it's deciding what a full train is just based by whatever is in the train that arrives. Um, so the assumption here obviously is that every train that comes here is full. Um, but the nice thing about this is that if I decide later on that maybe I don't need so much steel here, for example, I could change the size of the train to one engine and one car and it would still work. It would automatically adjust to whatever quantities I have in the train. Um, so I really like the flexible and kind of universal and modular nature of this setup. Um, I know it's a little bit complicated, uh, perhaps. And in fact, I would say that if, if, if you haven't, you know, if you haven't built a big train network before, um, or maybe you're building your first mega base, I, I would recommend that you just do your train stations the way that I set them up in the last episode, where you just have one incoming station for each ingredient. Those trains, they fill up until they're full. They come here, they stay there until they're empty, then they leave. Um, that's obviously a much simpler way to do it. Uh, in this case, I just wanted to optimize for bot travel distances and everything, but we're really, you know, we're really going after the last two or three percent of uh, optimization here with this whole complicated setup. So um, if this seems daunting to you, then by all means, just do the more simple way that I uh, that I started with in the last episode. Um, you'll be able to go very far with that without having any trouble. So um, this is just a more a little more complicated way uh, to set it up, but um, it does offer a lot of flexibility and a little more optimization uh, on performance, I hope. <laughs> I haven't done this before, so we'll see how well it works. All right, so I'm just gonna demonstrate this real quick. Um, I took my engineering train, I emptied everything out of it, except for 100 steel or iron plates. Okay, so let's pretend that this train is full with 100 iron plates. So I set a schedule, so it's gonna go to LDS in, and it's gonna wait for a green signal less than zero. Okay, and then it will go to the unload station until it's empty. And then in this case, I'm just gonna bring it back here to wait. Okay, so let's, uh, let's run through this and try to predict what'll happen. So it's got 100 plates in here. Our inventory is 143. So that means we have more than one train's worth of material already in inventory. So what should happen is the train should come and it should wait at the station. 
because we don't need more plates right now. We already have more than what's in a what's in a train. So let's send it off and see if it works. Um, it's going to have to leave and then go and make a U-turn and come back. So that'll take a few seconds. But once the train arrives here, we'll, it'll start to read the train contents and we'll be able to see the result of these comparisons. Okay, so we can see that the train has stopped. Uh, we can see now instead of minus 143, we see minus 43 on the red signal network. And that's because it's adding the minus 143 from our inventory to the plus 100 that's in the train and the result is minus 43, right? Uh, that result is greater than, or I'm sorry, that result is less than zero. So we're not sending out any green signal for the train to proceed. Okay, so let's send this back to the passenger station and we'll try the other, the other case. So here I'm gonna take out half of the plates. So now we have 72 in the network and we'll put all the plates in the train. So now the train has 215. Uh, this has 72. So if 215 plates represented a full train, the train's gonna get here, it's gonna see, hey, I have less than a full train's worth of material, so I need to send it to be unloaded into the station. So let's send it out now and let's see what happens this time. Here it comes. All right, so it's gonna stop. It checks real quick. It got a positive number. It sends it through to be unloaded. It unloads until it's empty and then it sends it on its way. Okay, so seems like it's working. Uh, we'll see how it goes when we get to uh, larger scales. Um, also, I, su I should mention, uh, in, in case you didn't know this already, um, when we have multiple train stations all with the same name, um, as in this case, I've got six stations all called LDS in. Uh, the trains will pick the closest available station when they're coming through. All right, so if there are no trains waiting, uh, the trains will always prefer this one. But if there are multiple trains waiting, then it'll just grab the next available one that is open. Um, so in this case, I can have up to six trains coming in here uh, and accommodate all of those. I think that'll be enough. Um, but the other good thing about this layout and this design is that I have plenty of room here so I can just, I can continue to stack on additional stations um, if we get to the point where we need to, to bring in more and more trains and have more trains waiting. Uh, it, it's easy to expand it that way. So, so my intention is to use this system uh, for most of the production areas that we're going to set up uh, to manage the trains. The other thing that I intend to do is, um, you know, I think I showed last time. Uh, let me get my let me get my inventory back first of all. Get rid of those stations. I'm just gonna refill the train with whatever goes in the train. Uh, put the ammo back in the artillery wagon. Okay. And then we'll pick up all this stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I showed you before the I think I actually, I think I have that saved. Yeah, this is the, this is the footprint for our, you know, our production units. Uh, remember each one of these can hold 30 production machines. So for me, one production unit is gonna be this layout with two rails, one rail with incoming material, one without going, and then 30 machines on each side. 
And then for whatever I'm building, if I need more than those 60 machines, then I'll just have another layout just like that above it with the stations named with the same names so that when additional trains come in, they'll just go to whichever one is available uh, to unload. I do need to figure out how to do these uh, comparisons and calculations with more than one station. Um, I hope I can figure that out. Uh, that might be a little bit complicated, although because I want to have I want to have each one of these units on its own separate robot network. Uh, because generally you'll get better performance having small compact robot networks with a small number of bots rather than having huge areas with thousands of bots. Um, when that happens, the bots end up traveling all over the place and, and they become very inefficient because they they spend all their time flying from one end of the map to the other. So I'm going to try to keep things small. And then as we need more capacity, we'll just duplicate these setups into multiples, each one with its own robot network. So right now I've only got a hundred robots loaded here. Um, so, uh, so what I'd like to do next is I'm going to unplug these um, because the train that we're going to use to begin with, uh, as you'll probably remember, we're using the first car for rocket control units. So I don't want to unload that one. Um, now the other thing that you could do here, uh, because one of the dangers of this is that if I send a train here that has by mistake that has ingredients so that I don't want to go here, it's going to unload it. Um, so one thing that we could do and maybe I maybe I will do it. Is you could use uh, filter stack inserters, and then what you can do is you can set up a combinator, a constant combinator. Wire that up to all of these. Set them to set filters. All right, so I'll just copy that to all of those. And then here you can tell it what ingredients are allowed. So in this case, it would be steel, copper, and plastic. Um, oh, you know what? That doesn't work with filter stack inserters. That would only work with filter inserters. Okay, and then this way they would only unload whatever ingredients you set here because it'll be filtered to only take those. Um, you can't do that with filter stack inserters because they only have one filter slot, unfortunately. I forgot about that. Whereas the regular filter inserters have up to five filter slots. Um, so this is certainly doable, but I'm going to try to get by without doing that because I prefer the, I prefer the higher speed of the stack inserters. They unload the trains very quickly. And in this case, I'm going to have, you know, uh, I'm always probably going to have a couple trains waiting to get unloaded. Um, so in a case like this, you want the train to get in there, get unloaded and get out of the way as soon as possible so that the next train can get in there. Okay. So what I'd like to do now is to bring in this pre-staged train. Uh, this is Mainstone, so I'm going to tell it to go to let's go to LDS in, and again we're going to tell it to wait for a green signal less than zero, and then it's going to go to LDS unload. Now in this case, it's not going to empty out completely because uh, because one of those cars is not going to empty out. So in this case, I'll just tell it to wait until five seconds of inactivity. And then we'll tell it to come back to main stone. And I'm going to tell it just to wait for a circuit condition that will never appear that way because I don't want it to keep returning with more material. I just want it to unload one load and then come back here and wait for me to tell it to go again. All right, so let's, let's send it off and see what happens. Now there's nothing in here, so I, my expectation is that the train will arrive here and then immediately go to unload. Once that happens, the bots 
should go into action and we should see some low density structures start to be produced. And then we'll be one step closer to making our first rocket, which is pretty exciting. All right, here it comes. Oh no, oh no, oh no. Get out of there. Whew. That was close. <laughs> Okay, so the bots are botting. We'll take some time to get the first batch of ingredients loaded. And now they're running at plus 100% crafting speed. Um, yeah, looks good. And then once the low density structures are done, they get brought over to these chests. Let's see how fast they're being produced. 64 a minute. Or more. Okay. In this case right now, it seems like 100 bots is more than enough. We could probably even get by with 50. But eventually this is going to be you know, three or four times this size, and uh, we'll probably need to bring in more bots actually at that point. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Then we can set up a train to pick up the low density structures and take them to the rocket base. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me make sure that the train went back to where it's supposed to and is not going anywhere. Okay, good. Yeah, so this way we'll be able to just kind of manu manually control the production of rocket parts when we want to do some more research. Uh, we'll just send this train on around and, uh, and then send it back when we're ready for more. Okay, so let's go back to the main base and we'll set up a train here real quick for, um, for getting these to the rocket base. Um, the other thing I have here is I set up a fuel stop. Um, and I have this basically set up to, uh, oh, I don't need that. I have this limited. Um, the point here is that at some point in the near future, I'll set up a train that will bring rocket fuel uh, to fuel the trains. So it'll just empty rocket fuel in here. And then I have a requester chest for each of the train engines. Um, to refuel the trains. Uh, we have to make sure that our, that our trains always have fuel. And since a lot of them are not going to be coming back to the main base where I have the refueling set up, um, we're going to have to choose uh, some of these outposts to refuel the trains so that we make sure that every train, at least at one of its two stops or three stops that it has, is getting refueled. Um, and I made a few notes here regarding trains. Um, so right now for refueling, you know, we'll refuel here. Um, we'll refuel at the smelting areas because a lot of trains go in there. Um, you know, trains from all the ore stations are going to go to smelting. And all the trains carrying plates elsewhere will go to smelting. So I think that's a good place to do refueling because probably more than half the trains are going to be stopping there. <laughs> on a frequent basis. Uh, we're already refueling at the rocket base because we have rocket fuel there already. And I'll probably need to add a few other refueling stops at some point. Um, another thing I added here, uh, this note, depots when multiple sources and destinations. What I mean by that is that if we've got items that are being requested at multiple locations and are coming from multiple locations, I want to have a central depot where material gets brought and dropped off and then picked up to go elsewhere. Um, a classic example of that would be iron ore because we need iron ore to smelt into iron and we also need iron ore to turn into steel and we even need a little bit of iron ore to make concrete. So we have potentially up to three different locations where iron ore will have to be delivered 
And we're also going to have probably somewhere between 5 and 10 mining outposts where the mining ore is coming from. So rather than trying to balance all of those trains uh, to go from the supply stations to the demand stations and make sure that we have the right number of trains going to the right number of places, I'm just going to set up like a big storage depot. So all the iron ore will go from the mining stations to get dropped off at the depot. And any place that needs iron ore will go and pick it up from the depot. That way we'll just have a centralized storage area. So we'll do that for iron ore. We'll probably do that for oil. Um, maybe even the rocket fuel. Um, we'll see. I, I, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to give that some more thought. But that's my intention as of this moment right now. Uh, okay, let's let's limit that. I don't need nearly this many radars. Okay. I think that's how I had it set up before. Okay, yeah, so train, right? Let's get a train. Uh, this is going to be for the low-density structures, so I'm going to need one locomotive and four cargo wagons. And I'm going to set this up right here. It'll start to get fueled up. Um, I am looking at some mods that will deploy new trains automatically, and I intend to implement one of those at some point. Um, you know, we are making train engines and cargo wagons and stuff automatically, but it's going to get to be tedious to have to manually set up every single train on the rails like this. Um, and there are mods that you can set up to automate that uh, to where you can define your train configurations and uh, give it a signal or whatever to uh, to have it automatically put the trains on the tracks and send them to a station. Uh, so I'll probably set up a rail yard someplace where we'll just uh, stage empty trains that are ready to be deployed to wherever we need them to go. All right, so this one is going to be pretty easy. This is going to go to LDS out until it's full. Um, now, at this moment, it's going to take a while to get full because we're not producing that many. So I'm going to say wait until full or until five seconds of inactivity. Inactivity will occur when there's nothing else being inserted into the train. And then that's going to go to the rocket base for LDS until empty. Um, and actually, I would like to go on this maiden voyage on this train. So let's do it. And then assuming all this works properly, um, between now and the next episode, I will set up the rocket control unit uh, train station and production. Uh, basically by copying a blueprint of what I've got here for the low density structures. And we'll get that running so that we can launch a couple of rockets. Okay, well it's still producing. So this material is lasting a good while. All right, and then once once five seconds passes with nothing inserted, then it moves on. So we've got 432 items in here. Um, we need 714 for a rocket. So this this train will make a couple trips. I almost just killed myself again. Um, I got lucky that time. All right, so now this is in good shape. Oh, we also need um, we also need a train for satellite parts. We've got to do that too. We need to set up solar panels and accumulators. So we'll probably do that in the next episode as well. Okay. Um, so I'm going to bring my own train back here, so I can get a ride back home. Let's go to Rocket PAX, and I'll wait here for that to show up. Yeah, here it is back again. That unloads very quickly. So this will, that train will just be going back and forth for a while. And it's refueling here, so that, that's fine. All right. Well, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, 
Also, I, I did mention in the description for the last episode, but uh, I do want to announce that I have a Discord server set up um, in case you guys want to chat um, outside of the YouTube comments. Uh, there's a link in the description uh, for an invite to the Discord server. Um, so again, if you want to come and chat, ask questions, whatever, um, without having to do that in the YouTube comments, uh, feel free to stop in and say hello. Be happy to see you there. And uh, thanks again. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.